Good day. Today's topic is bike geometries with a focus analysis to the upper front end of the bike, aka stem and the handlebar, the cockpit. Let me be right away frank and dirty. I believe current mountain bike stem handlebar layout is far from being perfect. Stems are too long, handlebars too straight and too narrow, and grips are too low from the ground. Let's start with a quick touch of bike history to uh, better understand the topic. Road bikes. The road bikes were and are still designed with a pretty short frame to keep the strength up and weight down and to keep to minimum the air turbulences between the wheels and the frame. Tricks to increase the aerial feature and make you faster. Unfortunately, such design do not offer enough room to accommodate riders biomechanically, so all road bikes were and are equipped since day one, and are still are today, of course, with a forward-facing bracket to hold the handlebar in the right spot in front of the frame head box. The bracket, which is worldwide known as the bike stem. Mountain bikes were born way after road bikes, so the engineers started designing mountain bikes around the road bike design. Designers started utilizing road bikes frames, I mean the double triangle front and rear, on top of which they installed wider rims, fatter tires and, and motor style wider bars, but they never dropped the idea of the road bike forward facing stem. In fact, our old first mountain bike from the real first Comelsa age, I'm talking about in 1990-ish, were equipped with a long stem, 80 to 120 mil, just about as, as this one on, on road bikes. And that was totally wrong to me. Start to design mountain bikes scoping roadies, why not just scoping motocross bike or even start for a completely total scratch. Anyway, that can, can be changed right now. So. Let's go on with the story. Year after year, bike engineers, mountain bike, and riders realize that the long slacker frame equipped with a shorter stem is actually far better for off-road riding, and so things evolved in that way. But as far as today, I, I really believe all the producers, they are stuck on the 35, 40, what we got, the 45, the 50 millimeter stem length. And, uh, and no one wants to get rid of the forward facing cantilever stem at all, no matter the length. Did I say cantilever? Yeah, nice word. A cantilever is a rigid structural element that extends horizontally and it's supported by at only one end. A word that actually matched perfectly the current mountain bike stem design. That's why from now on I will call this thing cantilever stem. I've always asked myself why motocross bike, the handlebars are, uh, are sitting on top of the forks, but on mountain bikes the handlebars are placed in front of the fork and the steer axle like on road bikes. I'm a dual rider. I rode motors and bikes from 1998-ish, uh, and I've always observed things with a different eye than with the classic closed mind cyclist. This is why, to me, all the, the, the bicycle stems never looked right. And then we come at the 2010. In 2010, I decided to quit riding the cycling hype, and I machined myself the very first prototype of the Moto style mountain bike stem. This happened even a couple of years before Mondrake came out with the forward geometry 10 millimeter stems proto. In uh, I guess it was two years later, so it was like uh, two, yeah 2000, 2012. Anyway, this one is the V1 Rulesman stem. It uh, has a 18 millimeter forward offset and uh, it's direct mount for, um, for downhill application. And I initially used this one on uh, my custom enduro bike, equipped with a custom dual crown fork, 
a coil shock, 63 head angle, 180 travel up front and rear, a build uh, of 14 kilograms of bike that was totally forward in the future at that time. I've been riding the V1 for uh, 13 years now and uh, today I decide to go super big on this topic and I'm all in for this and that's why I've been designing and I wanted to ride the best, uh, the best I've ridden actually. I want to share my joy, I want to share the best and, I, and since the best is to ride show stems and no one is making it, I recently designed and produced the best enduro short stem and the downer one you can dream of. In honor to the 2010 V1 Proto, I kept the design and the name actually the same for a direct mount version, which is this one. And I made a totally new masterpiece for the single crown forks, what I call the V2 stem with a 15 millimeters offset. These numbers aren't left out of the case. There is a huge study behind these figures and uh, I will come back later with this in a, in a more depth way. So this was a quick history and briefing about Stems, now let's go technical. Why? Short sure stems are better than today's classical cantilever forward facing stem design. We have two bikes here. The first bike is a yellow bike. It's a classic length in the frame with a longer stem. It's painted in pink in here. It's been made so long for you to better understand what's going on. And the red bike is actually a longer bike with a no stem, or if you want to be precise, we got the 15 millimeters offset stem on it. So, on the two bikes, both real reaches are exactly the same. What is the real reach? The real reach is the through horizontal distance between our feet and our hands when we ride. And it's given by the sum of three things. The frame reach, which is this one, or this one on the red bike. The stem length, so from head tube to the handlebar center, minus the handlebar back sweep, because all the, the handlebars are back sweeped a little bit, usually 15 millimeters, considering the most diffuse modern handlebar. So let's, let's look at the, the image just a little bit more. We can really see how identical are the two real reaches here because the bottom bracket sits in this place and the handlebar sits here and sits here on the red bike which has a longer frame but a short stem while the yellow bike has a shorter frame and a long stem but actually both the real reaches which are these length R1 and R2, reach 1 and, and reach 2 are exactly the same. So reach 1 equals reach 2. Now let's uh, suppose each rider wants to rotate the handlebar right by, by some degrees on both bikes. What happens in the two cases? Let's analyze the yellow bike, which is the bike with a short frame long stem first in here. The wall ensemble of stem plus handlebar is actually moving right pivoting on the head tube axle, running on an arc of a circumference centered on the steer tube axle on the yellow bike, which is um, the same. Yeah, the same as your bike because you have the yellow bike. The handlebar actually never rotates. When you say I'm rotating the handlebar, you are not. Because on the yellow bike, you are swiping your handlebar. Your hands and the handlebar move with the same pattern of the your car windshield wiper. They swipe right and left. And if you analyze the rider body on the yellow bike, you see how the hands are actually moving in a different trajectory because uh, the left hand is actually pushing forward and is also pushing inwards like 45 degrees a little bit while the right hand is only actually pulling 
towards the rider body. They are moving in two different directions, two different path arcs, without uh, any, any symmetric movement. And this is something that actually is breaking the balance on the bike. The forces on the rider's hands here, necessary to generate a moment of force, aka torque, on the steer axle, also differs on the two grips due to the fact the arms of the moment of force are actually different. Let's, uh, let's see a better view of what I'm saying. This is, this is your steer tube. You got, the, you got a handlebar, you got a stem, and this is an out of straight direction movement of the handlebar. We got two grips in here. We have two moment of forces on each side. And these two moment of forces should be equal. And uh, the forces required to create these two moment of forces are actually different because the arms A1 and A2 are actually different. One hand is, is pushing more force than the right hand, which is in F2. The same movement on the bike with the a zero offset stem. The real reach is in here, so if we put the bikes together, we have the same length of the real reach, so the handlebar seats are the same distance from our feet because the frame is longer on the, on the red bike, but on the red bike with no stem or what we call the zero offset stem, the arms on the right side and left side, A1 and A2, are exactly the same and so the forces on each hand which are F1 and F2, are actually the same. So there is no arc of circumference movement like your car wind, windshield wiper on the red bike. Steering. The yellow bike is not a natural symmetric movement. Every time the rider has to move the handlebar out from its center, he must analyze, process and execute a series of tasks to generate the correct force on each hand. As well, he has to move the entire body to regain the balance, otherwise it will fail. Let's sit in your car for a second. Grab your steering wheel, which is round, on top, sort of, with both hands and make some precision turns. It's, it's going to be quite difficult to do the movement because those forces on both hands are quite difficult to, to doze. But let's say you do the same movement, placing your hands instead on top you place the hand spread it apart three o'clock and nine o'clock like this and repeat the precise movement when when driving it's going to be much easier moving the steering wheel or the handlebar with the contrary and opposed movements is a much simpler operation more intuitive since the human body handles symmetrical movement quite easily while it needs much more effort to make asymmetric actions such as steering the yellow bike. As well, grabbing your car steering wheel on top instead, three and nine o'clock. Let's analyze another practical case of riding mountain bikes. What about if the rider does not want to rotate the handlebar because it's just riding straight line but a sudden heat on the front wheel creates a torque on the head tube, steer axle, which initiates a rotation on the handlebar. The rider must generate an opposed moment of force, aka torque, to counterbalance the heat, a torque achieved by pushing and pulling by a certain amount the handlebar grips. Quite simple on the red bike because the Arms from steer tubes are the same, right and left, no matter the degrees of handlebar rotation. But again, it's much more difficult on the yellow bike because the arms from the head tubes are always different. And so it's going to be a mess. <laughs> the hands will require different forces to generate the same moment of force here. As well, there are different trajectories for the hands and so on. So a lot of recalculations for the brain. It's clearly more complicated to manage external hits on the yellow bike than 
on the red bike. The yellow bike has the cantilever stem, while the red bike has longer frame with a, what we call the zero offset or 15 millimeters stem. I found a nice video showing you this concept on Instagram and here it is. Here you can see how the body goes out of balance easily after the hit and so the steering goes to a non-recoverable 90 degrees position flipping the poor female over the bars. You can also note how soft the fork is but this is another story. Don't forget longer stem, soft fork, long offset in the stem means the wrongest lethal combo you can do on a mountain bike. The OTB over the bar will be very welcome with this combination of components. Placing your hands in line with the steel tube will make huge improvements on confidence when descending and offers a great natural steering experience for every riding situation as well. More precision, more predictable steering, less fatigue and overall safer rides. I've read and hear people willing to match the offset to the to the fork offset. <laughs> what the hell is that? Where that comes from? Well, it makes no sense. Anyway, this was the tech bird's view of the analysis, the Zenital view. What about the side view? What's what happening when you ride a yellow bike on a, or a red bike? Well, have you ever seen a fork tube with uh, heavy marks on the upper bearing area? I'm talking about something like this where the anodization color is all gone. Well, why this happen? Well, it's pretty easy. If the handlebar is attached to the fork using a cantilever stem like this, it will be always a moment of force on the steel tube bending it. A force that will worn out the steel tube quickly, worn out your headset bearings and so on. It's quite easy to understand. If you attach the handlebar on top of the steel tube this way there will be nearly zero bending forces but only forces that press down the tube so no mechanical stress on the components longer life to bearings and steel tubes and for sure better control better steering as explained is in a zenithal view so far i'm sure all of you still believe that a longer stem puts more weight and more grip to the front wheel, right? You know you are totally wrong, right? Follow me. Let's assume you are standing on the bike. Most of your weight is in the center of your body, what we call the core, a weight that ends all on your feet down there. And your feet transfer this weight to the frame through cranks and bottom bracket. Having this said, let's image a 100 kilograms rider putting almost 100 kilograms on the BB. How much of those 100 kilograms ends on the rear axle and how much on, on the front axle? Well, it depends on the length of the bike, which is the wheelbase, and the chain stay length. The typical ratio figure for a modern bike is about 70-30. So what that means? That means this. Air one, rider one, 100 kilograms, chain stay, front end, rear, ax rear wheel, rear axle, front wheel. In here we got 70 kilograms on the rear and 30 kilograms on the front axle. That's because the ratio between front end and the rear end is 70-30. Well, 30-70 to be more precise. What about handlebar? Is there any weight on the handlebar when you ride? Do arms transfer a weight to front wheel through the handlebars? Are the arms generating grip? Yes, for sure. That's for sure. But a very, 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 very low figure. Think. When you're riding, the arms remind, remains light, in, the arms float in front of you, but they stay suspended some sort of. The muscles could be engaged for sure to be ready for some hits, but they, it, it's very, very, very rarely that big loads are transferred on the handlebar through your shoulders, hands, down to the front axle. 
I run the data acquisition system since so many years and I've recorded some crazy g-forces on the high g-berms by some fast pro riders. Some of those gentlemen generates four g's on the berms and that means there are four times their body weight on the rider's body in those instances. For the 100 kilograms rider recently named, well, he would have peaked an instant of a whole 400 kilograms of load on that berm. 400 kilograms is a load totally not sustainable by most of human hands, wrist, hands, shoulders, even if you are the best weight lifter on the globe, but likely most of that massive load goes on the bottom bracket. So, if you want to add some extra weight on the front axle, it will be meaningless to move around your handlebar by a longer reach or shorty stem within those classic commercial sites, 35, 40, 45, 50, whatever. As well, meaningless will be to lift up or lower down the handlebar by changing its rise 10, 20, 30, 45, no matter. Swapping around stem and changing handlebar rise would only put your body in the true comfortable position when riding, something that frame makers should give to, give to you from factory. Creating correct frame geometries instead making Odol's bikes with stupid short heads to like short, yeah, crazy small reaches and nonsense low stacks. More grip on the front wheel, how can we get it? If shifting around the handlebar within some millimeters doesn't make any meaningful increase in the front grip, so how can we generate grip on front? It's super easy. Move your feet close to the front axle. Make a longer chain stay, and this is it. If you change the ratio between the front end and the rear end, for instance, we are shifting from uh, changing from 70 30 to 55 45 on this second bike, wheelbase is gonna be the same, but you're actually moving the BB from here to here shifting forward a BB and in this case automatically you are adding 15 kilograms to the front axle keeping your arms, shoulders, wrist free from any load and fatigue. So you're not pushing the handlebar down but you gained 15 kilograms of force from 30 now you have 45 kilograms on the front axle. There is a still a huge hype about keeping the chain stay short in 2023 a totally wrong hype most recent mountain bikes are all grew and will be something i'm so happy for but engineers did not increase the chain stay length too and so they create a strong imbalanced biased rear bikes most 2023 bikes have less grip on the front axle than previous year bikes. Are you aware of this? Along with the short chain stay hype, the market is still promoting the use of several different stem length as a real reach adjusting tool. I don't agree with that, since riding a forward facing cantilever stem like this, or shorter for sure, for mountain bike, is not the perfect solution as explained in the zenital analysis before to get the correct real reach, total reach for a given rider and this should be only achieved by and controlled by getting the correct frame reach instead adding or removing millimeters from the cantilever stem. Having this explained, I guess you know I guess you now understand why I'm only 179 centimeters tall and I ride XL bike since more than 10 years with the long reaches, long chain stays, hand handlebars seated on top of head tubes with a stem like this. 
Luckily, I'm not alone on this concept along the hundreds of thousands of motocross riders and enduro moto all over the globe. There is one very respectable man in the mountain bike industry who understood my visionary idea of modern geos and stem length and this man is Paul Aston. He believed in my idea and he went even further by its own own, you know, he built a totally custom frame the Aston, Alton, Tranon, whatever he wants to call it <laughs> every time a different name a bike with perfect geometries including a proper 500 mm chainstay to match the modern long wheelbase figure he report several times and he show you with the videos that he never had before a bike with so much grip in his entire life and he is a man who really rode and tested every sort of bike from the years he was tester at pink bike till today testing for its own testing facility people like us know exactly that you are you, you say the short chain stay and longer stem climbs better you know it's totally wrong again and let's see why yellow bike short frame short chain stay and long stem Yo, C of G, where is the C of G when you climb? The C of G is about in your central part of the body, as explained already, so the core, and it will sit somewhere around here. That's the C of G. As soon as you hit a steeper climb, the C of G goes out from the rear axle and as soon the CFG goes out, the front wheel lifts and you have to stop. So it's a game over. Same slope, red bike, which has a longer chain stay. The CFG is about in the same position, but it will stay inside for a, even for a steeper inclination hit climb. So the yellow bike doesn't climb better than the red bike and the red bike has a long chain stay so the chain stay should be longer if you want to climb don't forget the more that the front wheel is is far away from your center of gravity the greater will be the moment of force that keeps your wheel planted so a long wheelbase bike will actually climb better than a short wheelbase bike people often think that longer bikes are harder to pedal as well, slacker head angles are harder to pedal and you are all wrong. You are all wrong, people. The rolling resistance in your tires plays the one and only big role in climbing effort. A slack head angle, a longer chain stay, a longer wheelbase like the red bike would never steal watts out from your legs. In regards to the stem length when climbing, there is actually no difference between a longer stem or a zero offset stem if the correct real reach is correct for a given rider height for sure if you have bought a stupid medium bike and you are 180 like me tall you your reach is ridiculously too short and you will be forced to use a stem like this otherwise you have your your handlebars on your knees but let me be frank who the f sold you a short bike a medium for a, a meter and 80 centimeters of height well uh, hype is all about hype you know and easy sales but anyway moving around the handlebar position by adding or removing spacer or changing stem length won't add any meaningful load to the front wheel because the book of your body of your weight is on the core and it stays, it stays elsewhere I say again Stem length is a no factor for climbing if real reach is a correct one for a given rider height. So to make a great climbing bike, four things are needed. First, the long chain stay. Second, the long front end. Third, vertical seat tube. And number four, a good anti-squat value. What about if we wanna, if we wanna ride downhill? What happened? Well, it's quite easy to see how on the small bike with a short wheelbase, short chain stay and long stem, 
it's really easy to go over the bars because as soon as your uh, center of gravity here past the front axle, you actually flip in over the bars. On the red bike, which is a longer bike, the center of gravity will remain inside from the uh, point of the front axle and so you will not flip over the bars even if the descent is more steep. Many other positive effects of the zero offset stem when descending I've already explained in the Zenital view so I've stopped saying how better is to, is to ride handlebar mounted on top of your steer tube with your hands in line with the steer axle. This is the hand. One comment about the 2012 Mondraker attempt, the 10 mm stem. Well, that was a unique, incredible, astonishing idea, but Mondraker forgot to make a couple of things to make that to work. First, the chain stay were too short. We are talking about 2012, 26 wheels, 430 chain stay, ridiculously short. And second, frame reaches were ridiculously short too. So the Mondraker attempt was a total fail because bikes were just not big enough for such innovative idea. Back to 2023. What are the best geometries, handlebars and stem combos you could ride? For the average guy 180 tall like me, for sure a wheelbase of a 1300 or more, chain stay of 460, 470, 480 or more, and a fixed 63 head angle no matter the bike use, wide handlebars, 800, 830, 9 to 12 back, 5 to 6 up, and last but not least, I want you to ride a stem on top of the head tube, no matter if it's a downhill or enduro, whatever, 15 to 18 millimeters revealed to be the best offset you can get, and I've tested for 13 years. This is the best length that place your hands align with the steer tube for the best natural steering experience you can get. So I really hope to see you drop in short stupid bikes, short stupid geos, as well drop the vintage cantilever stem concept and start riding now the best, the absolute best you can get. So don't believe the hype, best or nothing, it's all for today. See ya.